Okay, guys, hope everyone is doing well. Before we get into this video, I just wanted to show you something. It's 2.30 a.m. And I just laned against Drew Toot, like the real one, and I went 0 and 12, and I still won the game with 4.6 yes per minute. <laughs> nah, that was so stupid. So I think, yeah, it was time to shake it off and record some content. <laughs> I had this in mind for quite a long time. Um, I've been recording my games on the main account that I play off stream uh, and off recording as well. I mean, I mean, I'm not commenting on it, but I felt like some of them could be interesting still. So what I'm going to do is explain my thought process and do just like I was like gaming on the spot and what goes through my mind. At the same time, I will actually coach myself and try to find mistakes and see what I can improve in my gameplay. And I will note that down. And at the same time, I will show you how I review games now. Uh, because I'm on a drill, a very intensive drill to actually become better at League of Legends. And it's working. Like if I'm learning against Drew 2, it means that I have a Grandmaster Challenger MMR. So I guess it's working. Um, we started in like High Diamond. And, and yeah, I've been reviewing games every single morning for a month now. And I think I'm going to keep doing that with a pen and paper. So here I'm not going to do it with a pen and paper, but I'm going to do it on my PC. So um, first thing first, whenever I get like, like let's just imagine this guy is a student actually. So this is past me, this is prison. I mean, you, you, you got that. Um, First thing first, I always do what I call the thinking and, or at least I should always do it. And here I'm pretty focused. So I'm guess, I guess I'm doing it. Um, up, oh, I can use Epic Pen, I can help, nor. Okay. So, uh, the way I should do it, wait, who is that champion? What the fuck? It's, it's Reckon. What the word skin man? Oh, no, it's not Reckon, it's not Reckon, it's okay, 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 so let's see, um, we should start with bot lane, that's what I've been learning recently, um, so we have Vayn Maokai into smaller Reckon, what I'm seeing is that uh, scanning, scanning, uh, engage, uh, see, engage, Engage, kind of. I mean, he's the most range of all the engage melee supports. Uh, ignite here, exhaust here. So, if I see hyper carry scaling ADC with an engage melee champion uh, in support, my take is that it can snowball pretty hard. Um, and if it can snowball pretty hard, well, I want my bot lane to snowball. So, I will look instantly at the jungler. Can my jungler have my bot lane snowball? Yes, because it's an Elise and it is really good at diving and ganking early on. Um, and Smolder is pretty vulnerable to Elise. So, I think that's the target um, already early on. Uh, plus, they have an Odir matching Elise, and Odir is more of a farming champion, and Elise is more of a ganking one. So I shouldn't expect, like, no one should expect much presence from the jungler. Uh, how does mid lane matchup work now? Well, it's action with Ignite, so he has good good scaling, and he also has a lot of presence early on. Like, he's very, yeah, PTA Ignite action. And I have Asol, which is, like, just looking to scale up. So uh, mid lane needs to piss chill. Uh, okay, what I can see now is... Because I didn't prepare that, uh, like I played this game like a few days ago. Um, mid lane, we win if we just chill, go zero and zero. Jungle, we win if Elise gets some kills because if they just like trade farm, well, Odir is gonna farm faster and he's gonna benefit more from the scaling. So Elise need kills, uh, and then bot lane needs kills as well. So Elise should 100% play bot, and then I look at. Finally, the top matchup. Turn the mirror versus scale. It's peace easy matchup, and I need to abuse by myself. Okay, so the plan for my team is to play for bot and let mid scale up and respect that shadow early on. And the plan later is, or at least for me, top lane is just to like completely abuse the kill. 
I'm going to play for the level. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is going to be jungle tracking. Jungle tracking and um, planning on my first few waves. So I know that by default, I most likely want to have the push into Kale because okay, I want to abuse her, uh, get level two first, start trading and shit. Uh, so I will have the push, most likely it's gonna bounce back, and if I don't manage to get her on the first push, I'll probably get her on the bounce back. Um, now do we push wave 2, wave 3, we're gonna see depending on the jingle pathing. Okay, so yeah, that's kinda what should go through one's mind, getting into a game. If you don't have that amount of data, uh, like, there's a lot of data that I'm missing, by the way. Uh, also, like, I didn't talk about... Uh, yeah, I should have taped that actually. Saying mid or bot, but mid like doesn't need kills or whatever. Like it just needs to go even. Uh, bot lane needs to get ahead. Um, yeah, I didn't talk about like the five v five skirmishes. I didn't talk about the scaling, uh, shit like that. So we have really good scaling, but they have really good scaling as well. Uh, they have kale action, uh, smolder. We have vein and asol, and me kind of versus scale because I actually actually counter her. Uh, as a champion and then 5v5 skirmishes it's going to be about like maokai maokai um a soul being in sync yeah muting everyone because because why not so here my ad actually is i'm actually not getting the prayer right now because elise is calling that she's gonna gank bot lane and I already recognized in my main that bot lane like gank spot can win us the game because they're gonna win jungle and they're gonna win bot. So I'm I'm happy to give time to my Elise. And also if I want to pray you back here into this matchup, it's gonna be very easy to take. And also another way to beat a champion that's that well you stomp early levels is actually to force him into pushing you in. And and then you just never let her crash. So yeah, getting a really good trade here. I like Gale level one is it's easy unless she goes lethal tempo and you fight her in her wave then you can't um maybe my ghost was a bit excessive okay so now we already get into the coaching yeah i didn't need to go she would have ghosted i would have ghost advantage um so by the way i didn't talk about this how do i review my games early 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 mid early late mid early mid 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 late so i need to actually like cut the game into early game mid game and late game late game is late game and then early and mid i have to deconstruct them into like three parts so early early for me it's gonna be like the first pathing the first scuttle into the first base and that's that's early early and early early i'm already seeing a mistake which is um, uh, ghosts only if uh, needed or guarantees kill in ghost versus ghost matchup. Uh, we, uh, yeah, meaning that I should play for the ghost advantage and I shouldn't play like to like this ghost, yeah. Like she's gonna match it with her ghost, so I need to try to make her ghost without ghosting. Yeah, that was the first mistake. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna fast forward uh, from times to times because, like, here, what's gonna happen? Like, I'm just gonna slow push. So, actually, I think I'm going for the dive here. I think that's 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 gotta be the play. Well, then my E should be in the casters. If that's my ID. Yeah, I think I was hesitating too much. Yeah, my issue, I mean, the caster should have pushed that faster and then straight up go for the dive, of course. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Good job, me from the past. Uh, terrible flash. I think it's the same here. He actually ghosted already. Yeah, he's ghosting. Well, okay. Well, the good thing is the first two mistakes are... Uh, and for flash here, don't open with your ghosts. 
So actually my first two mistakes are based on sums usage and I remember when I was reviewing every single game because at some point I reviewed like I think it was a hundred game in a row, hundred games. Uh some mistakes were like, the most recurring mistakes that I would do. And it is ganked bot and got a kill and I'm really happy about that. I'm happy that I dished actually. Um I explain that I could explain that so here what I'm pinging is uh, part of the inside out rule to make it short um Elise right now is taking what's safest into what's riskier but in league a better thing that you should do is look at the riskier play ask yourself like can I do that for example it would be like invade bot camps can I do that? If the answer is yes, you just go for it. But the thing is, if you start thinking by the safest option, you're going to say, can I do these? Yes. Oh, but I could also do these. Maybe yes. Oh, but I could also do these. Oh, yes. Oh, but I could. And then, and then you're just thinking about so many options. So you start with the riskier. And if the answer is yes, you do that. If it's not, you go into the second riskier. And here, the thing is, she walked from here to blue buff to go back on scuttle to go back on camps. But the thing is, right now Udyr is most likely like top side on top scuttle because he killed me top. But there is a chance that he, by this time, he would take top scuttle base and go back into bot. And by the time she's doing bot scuttle, well, she doesn't have the time anymore. So that's why I'm pinging it like, very slowly because maybe she hasn't planned in mind and she wants to do something in a specific order for a specific reason. But my idea is that you should like yeah start start with scuttle right here. And as I said, yeah, she's doing the bad thing where she's actually. Wasting some time. Or actually she's going for the gank again. And blue buff would make a bit more sense. Anyway. Now the wave is on my side. So I guess we're just holding a freeze. And threatening an all in. I have tier 1 boots. She doesn't have boots. Uh, this is a really good spot for my wave. Maybe it's a bit. Uh, yeah maybe it's a bit too close to my turret. Because. It's going to end up like. The melees are going to end up. Um. Turret range. Yeah, I should have held that a bit further. I mean, I could have done something a bit mechanical, a bit better mechanically. Here, I'm gonna get my E soon. So I could have just extended outside of the turret range and see if she walks in E range, I E auto. And if she doesn't. Well, she doesn't, but here, because I kept walking even in turret range, like she knows that I'm, I'm going crazy here. And as I said, because I didn't hold the wave enough, now it's bouncing back. Okay. Um, not holding the wave far enough. The breeze. And now we're already into early mids uh i mean usually at this time we would be into early early mid for me but because my jungler didn't take his first base yet i'm still considering it's early early so now my id whenever i miss a freeze and i have a slow push going is that in some time i will have the wave crashing into her turret and it's gonna be a big wave and then i will have time for something so the best, absolute best play is, can I get level 6? Thank you, me from the best. Thank you. You see, I was thinking about it already. I'm thinking about the play that's going to happen in a minute. And my jungler based, and I consider that when early mid. Now that we have a slow push, I'm thinking, can I get level 6 with the slow push? And I'm not going to get it on this wave, but on the next one, which is going to be a canon wave, because previous wave was not, not canon. So this wave is not canon and the next one is going to be canon. And by this time, I will have level 6 and I can go for a dive. And to absolutely like secure the dive, I could ask for Elise because Elise is one of the best divers in the game. Just like Master E, like anything that can reset the aggro before level 6. Now I'm pinging it multiple times. Pretty good. And by the time we're in position to dive, well, we dive or... 
So I didn't want to wait for Elise to actually get the aggro and reset it because I knew that Udyr was coming and I wanted to... The most important play for me right now is to kill the Gale. Well, I still have Ghost running and I still have my ultimate, so... So GG. Action's coming. What am I doing? Okay, another mechanical mistake. Uh, here, I have the time to auto him and actually E to safety and not E this way. And that's something that they very often do. Is that I'm like better safe than sorry. And I E this way. Then I have to walk all the way back. And here I could just take auto him. Boom. E this way. I'm safe already. And whenever we see action on the ward, I just, I just keep basing. So... Um, Okay, I got a bit of a screen issue. Sorry about that. My screen is all black right now. Happens, happens. Okay. So back into OBS, back into this. Back into opening this and then uh, have time to be to safety. Also, once C action, just run. Because here I actually see action. I think I, in my mind, I think I remember thinking, okay, should I go and suicide to the T2? Can I can I actually be safe? And here I think I'm autoing minions actually to reset my E favorite. But we end up giving a double key on that's that's really bad. And it all comes down to my first E. Like that's the biggest part of it. Okay. Uh tier two boots to keep uh, not being kited by Kale and double longsword, so I have some AD, really good. And going back on the map, Botlane is winning because of that early Elise gank. And because enemy Botlane didn't respect the fact that it was our win condition, so we are for sure gonna play for that. Am I gonna hold this far enough? Yeah, again, like, actually, like, it is a freeze, but guess what's going to happen in just a few waves? I mean, it's going to end up, it's going to end up crashing. Okay, so my freezes need to be a bit further from the lane. Uh, so here, the reason why you start pushing back. Because I'm freezing, I'm denying golden experience, freezing, denying golden experience. And also I don't have ult, so I don't want to just push and then get it run down by action. And then I see that action and Kale are mid. So now it's time to push again. Uh, no demolish. Mistake early, early. Or even like I could add, because whenever I'm reviewing pro games, I add drafts. No demolish maybe because i was concerned that it could be kale mid and action top then it would make sense but if i know that it's kale no demolish is just pure grief okay so here i should look to prevent her access from the wave i think that's the better play so i'm dropping a ward but she could be coming from that bush Oh, but, I mean, yeah, we don't have vision. I mean, I guess if she comes from that bush, I can just go straight for her. A win game, chill, okay. Yeah, because she's back into mid, because she knows. Uh, are my turrets in danger? Not really, so I don't think I have to take that T1. I think I should maybe go and invade the jungle, no? Or maybe because actually... Yeah, they have a wave crashing. It's, it's on three plates. I could either look to go for an invade and then finish the turret later. But I think here it's actually fine because it gives me my, my item. Plus there is actually a chance that if I play to get T1 later, I actually don't get T1 later and they get T1 first bot lane. Um, so, and also I, could, I can actually crash, crash the wave on T2. 
now I'm a bit yeah I have perfect vocal for Kraken so I think that's that was the right thing to do okay perfect perfect it's funny because I'm actually one two and two but I'm I'm actually stomp like absolutely stomping she cannot she cannot really match me well really nice read by me my team is on Drake I see that they have a ward so they know that my team is on Drake and grubs are gonna spawn so they are gonna want to play for grubs but I also see that they have a pink ward so I'm like yeah, come and face check me action. On the W. I mean, for me, it just makes sense. It doesn't hit. Because for me, it's going to make sense. Like, he needs a bit of a reaction time. So two autos. And then he's going to walk away from me. He's walking away from me. Okay, I'm not going to rate it as a mistake. For me, it was, it was fine W. Should I have try to E on top of him to cancel his thingy? I don't know. I misclick a bit. Yeah, you see, like that's what I should have, should have been doing. When I have the time to go back to safety. Well, I just go back to safety. Uh, well, I had the shutdown. Get the kill. I have a red buff, so I'm gonna play this slow. Never mind. With this, I think yeah, I, I was I was not. I didn't want to go into crazy because I was like Kel has ult, but then Kel wasn't using ult, so then I was like okay, I should go, and I get kited plus she uses ult, so I guess it's like really bad usage. Um. Yes, Kel has R. Use uh, E smarter. Up. He. We get this. The wave top is pushing to me, so I have time here, so I can actually help. Yes, really good. Thank you. Here you could be thinking, yeah, you have such a big wave, you need to farm it. But the thing is, if I go farm this wave, my wave that's coming is going to stay alive and push into them and Kale is going to get it. If I wait, this wave is going to keep building bigger and bigger because their next wave is going to add on top of it. And also it's going to deny my wave. So it's overall more golden XP. So I think it's a really good play to stay and help and i see action and yeah it's i did the same w or just closer and i get an extra kill now you know that i could help but boom now i'm topping perfect timing okay really good things but i mean i knew it was a good vod that you have a lot of things that you can learn from but also for sure like still nitpicking some mistakes make me learn even more and i'm sure can give you um substance to learn as well i'm not too sure why i'm going there is it to share xp because it actually gives plenty of xp oh okay now it was probably yeah to secure that we actually get it but we have good vision i mean there's no way udyar goes through mid and then this way but the thing is also like helping your jungler gives time to your jungler to make more plays and for doing that, I actually lose, well, three melees and a bit of time top. But I mean, I wouldn't have done much with that time because I would be far up on the map with Odir being top and no ult. So, so maybe it's actually fine that the hyper bait her out and also secure some XP. No, I think it's fine. Okay, so now um, we're in early late for me. Well, I just realized that what I consider being early mid, early late, it's often um, on the basis. I mean, it just makes sense. Like, League is a turn-based game. It doesn't look like it because it's very dynamic and there's no clear turn that says, this is your turn, this is your turn. But it's a turn-based game. It's sometimes your turn, sometimes their turn. And, and it's always a cycle like this. If you're really fed, if you're really winning, your turns are longer and you can do more things during them. But you don't always have a turn. Let's say you're stomping your 30 and 0. 
And you're going to keep killing, killing, killing. And then you're going to have 1k, 2k, 3k, 4k in the bank. At some point, enemy team is going to have more items than you. So you need to base. And during that small window, it's their turn. So I think I think that's... Yeah, that just makes sense. And usually it's in early, late, slash mid, early that you send your bot lane mid. And here I'm really happy that my bot lane is being mid. Uh, I think that's that's a good lane assignment. Uh, well, I know that she has no ult, right? Because she used it before in grubs. And I see almost everyone. Do I see everyone? Yes, I see Akshan. I know that Udyr was bot lane before. We saw him when we were doing grubs. So most likely he's bot lane now. Plus we have good vision. Uh, and I see their bot lane. So I know where everyone is. So I can just go and take that flash. Now, Akshan is off map. And I'm getting lower in HP and I have uh, pretty good gold. And there is going to be shit to play on the map. Could I stay? Should I stay? No, I think, yeah, perfect. And Odia was actually back top. But he was back top, actually, it's off map. Uh, yeah, and I have a shutdown. So I think that was a really good base. Plus, I have things to buy. I think. I think now I would actually go straight breaker in that game, looking back at it. But also I think that uh, Zeal would be a better spike than this. And I could actually go Kraken PD. Okay, I will just keep that in mind. I will not write it down as a mistake. But Maybe I had that itch in my butt at that point. Like... like when you have plenty of experience on your champion and you've played a lot of builds, it sometimes comes down to the itch in your butt. Like, you just, you would rather build something over something else just because you feel like it. Here, the reason I'm not going there, actually, I could go there and be useful, but it's because uh, for me, there's no objective on the map. We're not like gonna lose mid lane from that. Or at least if we get in a position where we're going to lose mid lane from that, what I, I can cover. But yeah, like they're not taking anything. And I want to save my ult and I want to save my time, my turn for... Um, actually valuable stuff like Harold or Drake. So could I have actually hit that turret at least a bit? Oh, but I thought the walls were up. Yeah, I think if I think that walls are up, it's better to actually take two camps here. Because it's like 200 gold for me, but 200 gold denied for them. So it's like 400 gold, so it's like a kill. Instead of taking like 20 or 30% of uh, tier 2's... Uh, tier 2 turrets HP. So I think this is fine, actually. Yeah, I'm fine with that play. So now... He gets it in time, but he used Smite, which is not going to be bad because I think we have Harold spawning soon. And also have info. Yeah, I can't know she was here. So yeah, I don't want to trap Kale or do anything too fancy. I just want to have the push. I just want to have the prio in order to play for Harold that's spawning. So... I think that's what me from the past should be doing right now. Not looking to Daver, not looking to do anything because we have actually a small window where we can actually herald. Thank you, me from the past. Thank you. I can actually herald and be there in time for Drake. And I think that's the best play right here. So now we're going to observe kind of what happens and see what's the best way to help for drake to just like, go straight there with both my sims and my ult and that's why i didn't go to the mid fight because i wouldn't have my ult here or do i actually like, herald mid here i guess that me and Moke could trap smolder okay probably has vision okay is pushing but like right now my focus is on is on drake I think Odir was dead, no? No, he wasn't. But he was out, he based. I believe. 
After I consider, and we have the position, and Udia has zero dash. So we can just go for that Drake, and I ping a soul to go top. But how early do I do that? Because right now it's actually the best play for a soul to go top. Okay, that's my mistake. Uh, I don't see much in early late, but for me we're getting into. I mean. Yeah, after Drake, it's gonna be it's gonna okay. Early late, uh not thinking lane assignment cost us TP on mid. Hop hop. Yeah, it's already like I know that I'm sacking top and I know that we have a big wave uh, crashing and I know that we don't want to let scale get like too many like free resources. And right now, I'm actually pinging it. I'm actually pinging him to go mid now because Vayne was hovering top. Like, I just wanted to, someone to go top. But certainly not him bot lane. Why do you want to be bot lane? Because there's, well, three turrets to take. And also because next objective we're going to play on the map. Actually, it's not Nash because we're at 15 minutes. But, but yeah, I want to open a bot for Nash at the end of the day. Um, mm -mm. So now I know that they have vision here. I don't want to use Herald just for one turret, most likely. How much info do I have here? It's funny because now I've been doing the same. Look at the, that's, that's why coaching is so important, guys. Even coaching yourselves. Um, most likely, even if it's a win game, losing game, whatever, the mistakes you do, you always do the same. Um, I do a ton of micro mistakes that I don't talk about here, like some words that I put, some tempo, some autos that I cancel, etc. Now I'm already seeing that there's one mistake that I do twice and another one that I do three times. Mistake that I do twice, W. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that like he has an auto now and he's going to have an auto now. So it makes sense that this W is not going to hit. But it doesn't make too much sense that he's going to auto me when he's in meta range. Um, but yeah. But the thing is, into action also, I like to W early also for the AD buff. So, so it's a tough one, but still. Um, w usage... See, W usage and ghost again, same shit. Because well, here I ghosted just like level one, all the shit that we did. So was that why I went for that play? Oh yeah, I think I think I, I guess that they see my my team hovering bots. And I have flash and I have ult, so I'm really safe if their team comes and I can gain a lot of time. So it ends up being good, but like the ghost was so not necessary. Uh do I want to I think I think I actually should have Herald here. Yeah, I think I should have Herald here. One, two, one, two, one dead. We get one turret plus one charge. But here instead I get one turret. And that's it. And we could even maybe get two turrets. Um, why is it a good herald? There is... There is no objective soon that we can get for herald. So it's a gold herald more than... A pressure one. I understand myself. Um, use it now, but for two turrets. Potential. It's not even potential because if if I don't get both turrets bought, it means that they came to defend it, and it means that we get your one mid. It would have been an insane herald here to take. Um, to put at least. Okay. Well, now my idea is just to go back bot and 
pressuring to herald bot lane again or kill whoever faces me but then i see that big fight i don't think i want to commit too hard why am i dashing in same reason as like it's it's exactly the same situation as before the fight that i didn't take but right now i'm looking to take it why probably because i want to herald mid But same shit, look at when the objectives are spawning. 250 here, 240 here. I mean, I guess I can use ult, just not flash. Because then I have no flash for uh, uh, Nash and Drake. Um, I guess I could have even like just Harold in, bumped them, like, like got the turret and, and ran away. I'm not sure, like, nah, nah, oh shit, nah, this just looks bad, like, just, um, but, wait, plus, I mean, I mean, the thing, I think on the spot, it's because I have Herald and I'm feeling pressure to actually, like, use it. Wait, how is it that stupid? Like, I pushed that last wave, and he knows it. And now he goes instant for the wave and walks up. Well, that's really good. And now I'm gonna Herald, right? I mean, I could wait for the wave. Finally. Okay, well, nice. But again, yeah, this herald could have been uh, before and I would have a uh, way better spike. I should raid it here. I mean, do I still see everyone? Yeah, I do. She's probably gonna kill it on the spot, but then I would actually close distance and maybe be able to kill her. Uh, raid that herald. And I'm basing, and for me, I consider that we're getting into mid mid. Now she's gonna spawn soon, we're playing for next Drake. And it's not the first rotation or the first rotations after. Her. After mid, uh, mid game starts. Uh, yeah, I think. not thinking about items before the another mistake i do it most of the time but sometimes i catch myself not doing it uh let's see now i decided to go top Probably because there is a T2, because I am concerned about the fact that they try to swap, uh, to trade, what's happening? Trade Drake for Nash, so because my support is not getting vision there, I'm the one getting vision there, dropping a ward, I think it's really smart. And then I apply some sort of pressure, like when I was pushing here, maybe someone could be like, oh shit, we need to defend on Trinamir. But most importantly is I get mid prio. I at least I threaten to take mid prio. And I'm giving a lot of space to my team. I can't afford to go all the way around. I can't afford to go and catch that wave. Okay, so now for me the idea is it's gonna be between either they're gonna start a fight right now and I need to be there. And if not, team needs to give me a second just, just so I get mid prio. If I get mid prio, well, we could either, um, either it's going to bring some of them to go and defend mid and then we have a 5v4 or 5v3 even. 
or they're not gonna defend it and then we get tier one mid or we get it like really 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 low in hp and i can use mid prior to actually like walk around and go for a what it's called blank so here i'm between the two that's why my cam is like this I don't think Maokai should be with me. I think Maokai is in a really bad position right now. Oh, but he was running away from Odir, right? Yeah. So, there is that. All I need is a good angle. And Maokai ult. And I told you actually way earlier. Well, that's not mid prayo, but you see, like, it gives me that angle. And I told you, yeah, it's about Maokai ult and Aesol ult. Hmm. So should I play with my team CC here or should I actually um, zone everyone? Because that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm still bad at fighting. I need, I need to observe them, um, the fights. Because here I have two options. It's either... I'm going to go on that guy. It's going to jump out most likely, but then I keep going on uh, Udyr and Kale. And then I'm with my team, but it means that I bring action and I bring Smolder. So I bring their carries because that's there's the damage. Or I go in crazy. I'm most likely going to die, but at least two carries are out for me. I'm really strong. I think I think that's fine. But then Yeah, I think I'm looking to Eon Smolder because I have, have Navori and I can reset it. DD. And then I actually had the idea to go back to my team. So of course my team wins this because well they're playing 4v 4v2 basically. I don't need to E here. Like instead of Eing on Smolder, I could I could just auto action. Like why is Smolder more of a priority target than action to me? It's actually not. Because action can revive people. Smolder cannot do that. Action is about 12, Smolder is about 10, and Raikan most likely is gonna look to feel Smolder more than action. And I didn't need E after I used my W. W used. I can just walk on action, and if he is away, then I can look to Eon Smolder or just walk up to Rakan or whatever. But okay, uh, he not needed. Once I hit W, and what else? Uh, I mean, that's the biggest part of it because it's because of that E that I need to... I actually reset my E now at the very end of my ult and I don't manage to walk to my team in time and not die from the ultimate. Oh, no, no, also. Action, priority, targets, not smolder. Because even if I kill the smolder, action will revive him just after. This is gonna finish me off. Yeah, we win the fight because, well, I did such a good job zoning. It's a bit sad that Elise died. Because now we can't do what it's called. Can do that. We get a lot, though. I don't know if it's worth all of these flashes. I think it's not two flashes for the ace. And... Why am I going Rage Blades? Bro, I've been. I've, uh, yeah. I've gotten better at buying items, I guess. This game, I think it's it's straight into Navori, into PD. Like, it's never. Could be Kraken first, so it's never bad. But Rage Blade third, it's not like I'm gonna hit Wood here. Never gonna stack it. But it. Um, 
Okay. Well, going bot is the right play. No one can stop me. So, let's see. I don't want to apply pressure if my team is not in a position to pressure something as well. So, waiting for my team to be on the map. Not a giga big fan of Elias being bought, but I guess that's like if she wants to utilize her champion, she needs to go for that kind of place. And my idea is to either like push and go for a dive or push, bring someone, and then rotate to my team and play with A Soul and, and Mogi ult again. Well, this guy is dead, no? Sam's man! I'm so bad at using Sam's actually. I need to review more games and see if that keeps happening. Oh, I think I thought that I could flash through the queue. I think I can actually. Nah, I'm actually fine with that flash. Because, because if I manage to flash through the queue, because here the ID that I have is I need to kill Kale fast. That's what I need to do. Because I see no one on the map. And maybe they're covering because they saw Elise. Right now, they had a word, they saw Elise, and they understand what we're up to. And they know that we took red buff because everyone just magically got a red buff. And now I'm ganking. So. There is very likely backup. Now I'm like, I think if I flash now, I, I go through it. It's not easy, but that's what I, I try to do at least. I flash just a bit too late because if I manage to flash through it, I reach her really fast and I would auto auto be able to reset my E and I would be able to finish her off. But why am I scared? I mean, I'm I think I'm, I'm scared of Akshan more, more than her. Yeah, we still don't see Akshan. He could very much be there. Well, he was hovering top, but I didn't know that. Um, but even if he's here, I think I double kill, no? I mean, when did we see Udyr on the map? Yeah, we see him during that. We see him now. Yeah, I'm not looking at Odier. Yeah, I don't have I don't have four eyes, guys. So I guess if my idea is action could be there, it's fine to drop the play and to be happy with getting her ult. If my idea is I don't know. I'm gonna get out of her ult and E back in, then then it's shit. Okay. Now she doesn't have ult. So I could look to be pushing, but they seem to have co committed really hard. That's a tough play, actually. Because the thing is, if we get wiped here, I could push bot and kill Kale and get bot in him. They're going to get Nash, and bot in him is not going to matter. It's just going to give them free golden experience during the whole Nash duration. Um, but if I can push bot, bring Kale bot, and rotate, now we have a number advantage, and I can at least bail my team out. And at, at best, actually help them win the play. But I have no sums. Which is a big part of it. But, I mean, it's, I mean, on the spot, it's like so hard to know and assess. Probably that I should take more info. I should look more at the fights. Um... Take more info. Get the fates. Okay. Chasing Odier is really good here because he's the jungler. I think I miss E here. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, he's the jungler and that could open up Nash, but my bot lane is dead, so I think... Well, it's a nice trap. Yeah. 
just going back pots. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's not me thinking that the way to play versus scale is to get out of her ult. I was I was concerned about that channel hundred percent. Otherwise I would like never play this normally, you know. Okay, okay, I'm not I'm not that stupid. Okay, we kill Kale. So their bot lane is bot. And Kale is dead. I think I should be pinging Oh, when did... Oh shit, Aesol died here. Yeah, if Aesol didn't die, that was that was a free Nash. Or at least Nash into turn them. So I'm applying pressure and now there's gonna be Drake soon. And I know that Kale is spawning. Okay, how good was that shit? Kelly is not there yet, so it's a 4v4. I'm really strong actually, and I have my ghost. I know that they know that I'm here. And I have my team coming. The thing is, I'm strong enough to actually, like, okay, Udyr has frozen heart, which is broken item. We all know that. But I'm, I'm three levels up. There's my okay old coming, and my team is not there yet. Again, I don't need to E to try to close distance on Smolder, plus like Smolder goes through walls. Okay, I mean, that's something that I didn't know. It was my game, like third game against Smolder. But again, I like just, I don't need to E here. Yes, I reset it fast though. But maybe I can actually hit the wood here. But I think in my mind, like, Udyr was Vayne's job, and my job was more like to dive. I know that just, like, still looks like a, a bad E again. I dive from the burn. Um, yeah, I mean that, uh, that that's that's so shit, man. But the thing is, if 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 I kept hitting Udyr, I would not be able to get that Eon Smolder. But then I, I would just kill the jungler, and then we get Drake and maybe Nash even. So so I guess it's self aim. Yeah, just just. Hit what you can hit. Hit what you can hit. Don't E on again uh, on target being peeled even with. So the reason I, I have a hard time taping is because my mic is just in front of my keyboard. Up. Uh, okay. Well, we still most likely get Drake because of that. Because Udyr was out. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it would have been so much better to just kill the Udyr. We're playing for objectives. We're not looking to kill the carry now. And they actually got the Drake. Okay. So let's see. Now that Udyr is dead and Kate is dead. I'm pinging to Nash. Probably pinging to Nash and turn. Because we have we have Aesol ult. And we have Elise being pretty strong. And I have insane DPS now. And we have Smite. So all we have to do is bring Nash and Smite range. I miss my W again. Nah, it's close. It's close. It's close. In my in my mind, he was just gonna run and and use E on the wall. 
saved it. I think that's actually what kills him. Yeah, that was really good. So let's see. Was it good just because I'm looking at the outcome and I'm happy about the outcome? Was it good because the process was good? Um, this dash to cut Reckon's way out and hit him is really good. Now I'm having Rage Blade stacked. I'm resetting my E with minions. Dashing on Smolder. Um, yeah, I think, I think on the spot I didn't know he goes through walls, but I guess... And then using Romp to reset my E. Nah, that was that was pretty clean. That was pretty clean. Okay. Now they have Wood here, but I think because we have Maokai we can zone the Wood here and get and get Nash. So it's kinda guaranteed. Okay. I should base now. Stake. By the way, we're in mid late. Oh. Okay, we're already mid late, I guess. Um should base. Unless no no no. Look at that. My team so here I'm actually taking this wave and applying pressure. That's that's the thing that's gonna happen. But by the time that I actually apply pressure on that T2, what happens? A soul would be just coming back on the map. My team is actually taking a wave that's here, so they're going to play on the next wave. They don't have a wave to play with. I'm just one time ahead. So if I'm one time ahead, it means that I should use that time to do something else. Because you don't want to be ahead. Like, it's not going to do shit. And I actually have my item in base. Yeah, now I'm basing. But it's a bit too late. Okay. Um, now we're doing some 1-3-1 one, one shenanigans. Is it good? Is it bad? I, I think me on the side is good because I can 1v2. Pretty much anyone. Just Udyar can be painful because he has Frozen Heart. But I think Asol should be looking to play with the team. He has TP though. Yeah, like that's that's what what they can do on side lane. So I think me on side is the right play. I can kill action, I can kill Kale, I can kill Smolder. Wait. Yeah, no, I think it's it's really fine to flash. Yeah, I wanted to kill fast again because I know that their team is maybe collapsing. And the reason I don't go back to top, it's because now the fight was looking really good. And I look at the fight and it looks like they are committing. So now I know that they can go. And oh yeah. The reason we don't end here. It's because action is alive and I killed like three of them. I killed Smolder, Woodier, and Kale, I think. So if action kills me, they actually all revive and they can defend. So I have to let my team for the what versus action and look to end. But something that I was thinking, could I have actually like, stayed in my team and get peeled? Nah nah nah. He can like he can even like Go out of envies, double auto Q and I'm dead instant or like auto ignite and I'm dead. Like we don't have healing, we don't have that kind of feeling. If we had the seraph in the sauna or something, uh, I, I would probably stay. Now we end up actually not ending the game because of that. Okay, we're in late game now. It's open nexus though. And I think at, the, at, at this time, I don't actually realize it's Open Nexus. Because I'm Tridomir, bro. Like, if I see that it's Open Nexus first. Okay, late game. 
31 min still no great trinket that's something and something else is open nexus put up drake is the play so everyone's focus is going to be around here so astrid the mirror I could just buy a red trinket, go around here, try to deny vision. And if they don't see me at any point, I just pull the trigger and boom, get the nexus. Uh, that's actually the best way for me to secure Drake. If I go on Drake, we could play a 5v5 and could be losing. But I think I don't realize fully that it's open nexus. what happens here so drake spawning the same as before i'm actually contesting mid prio for two reasons my champ is really good to take prio while being safe and my champ is also a champion that needs to be flanking to get the full of his potential on the fight so that's why i'm contesting it and action dashes in for some reason that's so bad and here for example like I should stay on the map and run all the way and look to end before action uh, is up. If I base here, it's a mistake. Okay, I actually don't base. But you see, my ID is, is Drake, actually. My ID is not, it's not Texas, it's Drake. And I think that's why Rakan is basing, because Rakan is like, oh shit, Trinamere could be backdooring, and I could. But I didn't, because I, I didn't realize it was it was Nexus. I could have been here already. And then and then Rakan cannot defend by himself. And I base race and I win. So yeah, big mistake by me. Now it's really good that I suicide for this wave. That was the play. That's a really good play. Because now I delay the wave they can play on. I mean, I guess they had the wave coming, but it is it is can defend as well. Could they have not just focused the turrets here? What if they just hit 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 smaller days? Hit 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 hit. No, they would get the open nexus, but they would both die. Yeah, and here they live, actually. But we end up getting Drake. But yeah, and I think now I fully realize that it's open nexus. So I don't know what made me that unaware of the situation. Okay, so let's see now. Now I know that it's open nexus. Um, why I'm not going for nexus? Should have again actually it's at 8k hp i have ghost and flash and my team can all suicide and cancel bases very easy with the asol ult and maokai ult so we could be result oriented and say that so the thing that made me scared was like imagine if i go for the back door but they actually get the nash because it's a 5v4 and then the base in time well they're gonna defend it and 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 i don't want that to happen and i still notice that we're strong as a team we're fed we have uh, a soul we have okay old so i should play with them then on my way you see that action is actually well i just face check action or if they checks me Or let's say I meet him. And then I'm like going crazy because Akshan is like he's at this point he's the reviver. He can like turn the game around with this passive. And then I go for Nexus. But I think actually I remember on the spot I was like, oh it was such a nice play to actually go for it because then I met Akshan and I was able to kill Akshan and I was able to end. I think that if here I actually just ghost straight up. 
to Nexus. Like, action cannot stop me. And I would just, I would just get Nexus 100% guaranteed. Okay. Well, biggest mistakes then that I noticed. Uh, no demolish, uh, bad, bad ghost, bad flash, bad ghost at another time, I didn't rate it. And bad flash on Kale, I mean, it was good in ID, but in execution. Uh, not holding the way far enough on the freeze happened twice. Um, half time to S to safety. To E. Yeah, that play on the dive. Not picking a lane assignment. Not taking enough info. W usage and ghost again. Yeah. Oh yeah, W usage was a big one. Herald not using my Herald the time. Uh, he not needed it. Once a W temporary target. Yeah, skirmishes, I still need to work on them. And it's basically more preparation. Like, they get so much easier, the skirmishes, when you already know what's your mission in a fight. Um, okay. And then, no red trinket, and not playing for the back door, where two other mistakes. Well, that lasted an hour, actually. Uh, well, it was it was pretty useful to me as well. It was pretty interesting, so I'm going to pause that so you see my process, and for sure you can learn a couple of things from it. And we guys hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, a comment, uh, or subscribe if you haven't already. Next video is going to be tomorrow, same time, same place. Until then, take care of yourselves, guys. Good luck, have fun in-game and in real life, and I will see you next time. Peace, guys. Much love. Bye-bye. <laughs>